Hello YouTubers, this is a quick video just to talk to you about a, an interesting uh, NuGet library that the .NET team released a while back that could be very very beneficial to you if you care so much about uh, how your code is performing, how your c -sharp .NET code is performing. Um, a lot of the times, um, you know, uh, you and your friends, maybe your colleagues at work will have discussions about, you know, which which code is more optimum, which, you know, library, which mechanism, which pattern, you know, can perform faster when optimization matters. And, you know, sometimes people just go on the Internet, start doing some search, you know, it's all built on theories and experiment experimentations of other people that may or may not be true sometimes people just read things and they say okay this is my you know my experience this is what i read and what i learned but they haven't tried it themselves um for engineers luckily for us you know we have the compilers we have the integrated development environment we have the capabilities and the tools to go and find out for ourselves you know which pattern or mechanism or library is is more efficient and more optimum and faster than the other and what i'm going to show you today is a new git library called benchmark.net 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 is basically a library that helps you you know benchmark or measure the performance of one function versus the other you could have as many functions as you want it's a very simple library to use and uh, set together you want to set the, set the data and have the library run and I'm going to show you a real life scenario that uh, I just had I was having this conversation with a couple of friends the other day and we were talking about whether if you want to check if a list doesn't have any items in it would you rather use count list dot count is larger than zero or would you rather use dot any because in lists in C sharp you could actually use uh, some fun functionality out of the box to just tell you you know which is faster than which and today I'm going to show you actually what what the result of that may be so uh, let's jump in here real quick to our code I'm just going to create a new project I'm going to pick up a console app.net core and I'm going to call it benchmark benchmark list so we're going to benchmark a couple of methods. Both of them perform almost exactly the same functionality. They are checking whether, you know, the um, a, a given list has items in it or not, right? So what I'm going to do here, I'm going to create a new class, a public class, and I'm going to call it benchmark lists. So that's just the name of a class that I want it to contain the benchmark, uh, design the benchmark test that I want to do. And then I'm going to create some data. So I'm just going to go here and say private list. Let's uh, let's let's create a list of integers. Real quick. Int. And then let's call this numbers and then let's create a constructors and and this dot numbers equal. Let's give it a list from um, a list from 1 to 1000 for instance. So enumerable like that dot range and just give it create a list from one to thousand make sure you convert that to a list okay so this is basically I just created a simple list and I said for that list you know please put in you know um, uh, values from one to thousand very straightforward there's no magic there right now comes in here the uh, the good stuff right so we have two functions here I'm going to create the first one public boolean uh, using um, using any so this function here is going to go and verify whether using any it's just going to go and say this dot numbers dot any so it's basically saying does this list it's verifying whether that list has any values in it or not that's all it's doing there's no magic there right but there's another function in here using count and this function is just going to use count return this uh, numbers dot count is larger than zero right for the people who are familiar with that stuff you know uh, there's also another way to do it which is public boolean using count property this this one is using count property like this which is should be technically faster and this one is using count function so there's a count function and there's a count property i'm going to show you the difference right now real quick so numbers dot count like this so this is a function and i'm saying is this function uh, larger than so there's count a function and count the property count a property it updates its value as soon as you insert elements in it right so when you call that it basically costs you nothing but 
these are just theories, right? These are just theories. People, uh, engineers, you know, could, um, you know, get caught into theories and rumors about certain things without actually investigating, right? Uh, you're an engineer, you want to jump in and you want to, you know, make sure that, um, that your, that, that, that your statements are actually based on experimentation and actual, uh, experience. So, okay. So using any, using count property and using count function. All right. We're going to go to NuGet after that. Just a, a simple uh, navigation to NuGet packages on the project. And then I'm going to look for benchmark.net. Benchmark.net. There's, there's multiple ones in here. The one that's .core is deprecated. They just said, okay, there is one. There's, you have one, one and for all. There's benchmark.net. So I install that. It's, it's compatible with all kinds of uh, different versions. You could use that. And then, uh, okay, I have benchmark.net right here. Now, all I have to do is just mark these functions that I've created with the keyword benchmark like that. So I'm just going to do control period. Here's benchmark. So that's one. I want to benchmark this method and I want to benchmark this method. So I have three methods that do almost exactly the same functionality. I want to know which one of them is more performant, which one of them actually has better performance. All right. Now let's run the stuff, right? So there's a thing that's called, so I, I can put everything here in a something called summary, which summary is basically, it's a very good um, uh, class uh, that basically saves you the time of trying to organize the results. It actually organizes all the results for you based on the um, uh, benchmarking that you're running and it spits out results in colors and you're gonna see what's going on uh, very shortly. So, all right, so summary, and then I'm going to go here and say benchmark runner. So that's a guy that runs benchmarks, right? Benchmark runner, and then I'm just going to say run, and I'm going to pass to it the benchmark that I designed. So benchmark list right here. Benchmark list, so that's my benchmark. So this is the benchmark test that I designed for those three methods. Uh, obviously, you cannot have input parameters in here because they want to make sure, like from the design, you want to make sure that the data that is being fed to all these different functions is the same. So you want to use something like a private class member, feed it with your constructor, and then start doing your tests, right? Now, what we want to do is to print these results out. So I'm just going to go here and say console right line. I'm just going to put the summary in there. That's all I have to do. Look, it didn't take so much. It really took as little as like without me talking, it would take you like uh, two minutes, right? So you have all these functions. Uh, again, it's based on how complex the test that you're doing is. But for this particular case, it's pretty straightforward. So you have these uh, functions all good and dandy. Now we just want to run. When you run, you cannot benchmark in debug mode. You have to run in release mode, right? Because you know, it, you really want to test your final release, your actual thing that's running there. There's no debugging and um, there's no debugging conditions or mechanisms in there that are slowing down, you know, your actual processing. It's just the final release, you know, your code is being uh, run and the performance of your code is being run just as if it is in production. So I'm just going to run my code here real quick. Uh, let me try to zoom in. Yeah, let's, let's zoom in. So there we go. So, so it says I found three benchmarks right and building one executable in parallel and it's going to start doing some tests right now so start.net restore it's pulling in the library it's going to start doing some magic and now all the magic starts right it's going to take about a minute or so you know to give you some real results as you can see here it warms up you know it warms up so a lot of people would use something like stopwatch, right? And they run it once and say, yeah, that's the result. That's not true. If you're actually benchmarking something, you want to run it many, many, many times in parallel on the same conditions until you actually get the average performance, you know, and that's basically what this guy is doing. It just finished up. If you just saw, it just finished up. Let me stop it right here. It just finished up with one function, right? And now it picked up on the second job. So let's, let's wait for it in here. So as you can see here, it's spitting out the uh, nanoseconds per operation, right? Nanoseconds, like, 
like one of a, like the smallest possible. I mean, there is also femtoseconds that are smaller than nanoseconds, I think. But, you know, the, the really, really fast because the operation is super fast and the payload is, is even um, um, smaller. It's just a thousand records. So as you can see, just, just right now, it just finished with the second one. Now let's see it doing the last one. And then after that, uh, we will move forward with the results. I mean, you can stop your um, console from running by just clicking on it. So it will freeze your console so you can navigate. And then if you click in escape, it'll uh, continue to spit out results. So here we go. All right, so here's what we got. So it says that using any takes around 12 nanoseconds, 12.8 nanoseconds. Using count property, use it consumes 0.0817 nanoseconds. So it's this is this guy is the fastest. And then the last one is using count function, which uses 3.5 nanoseconds, right? And then it goes on to explain, you know, all the different, like across all, you know, uh, using count property is the fastest of them all, is the fastest of them all. And then using count function and all that kind of stuff. Now, the test took around a minute and 33 seconds. Uh, this is just legends naming convention. This is what one nanosecond is. Um, uh, this is what the error is. This is what the uh, standard deviation is. The mean. Anyway, so this is this is basically what it is. It's just a quick test to show you how you can benchmark things. Uh, it helps you a lot learn about the frameworks and the libraries that you're using. It helps you a lot more uh, understand, you know, uh, the technology that you're using. But I always tell people this, and you know, some people may uh, agree or disagree. Uh, I prefer readability over performance as long as performance is not a priority. A lot of people will care about performance so much and over optimize, even pre optimize, even if there is no requirement for optimization. Sometimes readability and optim an, uh, an optimum solution are on the opposite sides, right? Like the, your ultimate optimum solution is one file that has all the code in it. But yet we go and build classes and build properties on these classes and use lists for readability, for the advancement of the, of the language and the technology itself. So uh, what do you think about that? What do you think about readability versus performance? You know, do you prefer performance even when not needed versus having a readable code? That's an interesting question to think about. And I don't think the question have one answer. And I think it's all based on the context and the team and the project that you're working in. Uh, so anyways, that's benchmark.net. It's a real cool library. It has a lot of features in it. The .NET team uh, um, uh, sponsors this library. It's an open source uh, library. You can find it so easily over here uh, on github.net benchmark. If you go to .NET Benchmark, the .NET library, and then I'm going to zoom in a little bit for you. You know, this is sponsored by the .NET platform team uh, from Microsoft. And then if you go here, you, you see the powerful .NET library for benchmarking. Obviously, the .NET team uses that stuff to, you know, make sure that they're giving you the best performance, you know, um, testing across multiple runtimes like .NET Framework. .NET Core, you know, you can test across many, many platforms. Uh, the library is amazing and you can spit out, you know, details and it, it goes all over the place. And with .NET Core, you can run it in multiple different environments. Uh, make sure that you are um, basically like, like, look at this piece here, who is using benchmark.NET, SP.NET Core team, uh, machine learning, ML.NET team, NT Framework team, SignalR team, F Sharp, uh, Orleans, Newton Soft, Jason, it's all over the place. If you're building something and you care about the performance, you probably want to benchmark, you know, you want to benchmark uh, uh, your your library or your system to make sure that your system is not just readable, is not just beautiful, does not just fulfill the requirement. But you also want to benchmark it to know how optimum your business is and how fast your business is. Again, we need it. Do not do pre-optimization. And then there is a, a special book about you know, the art of performance measurement pro.net benchmarking. And then at the very end here, please uh, take a look at the code of conduct uh, conduct when you are um, uh, trying to contribute to the library or use it. 
uh, a very good library, a lot of contributions, a lot of star. I actually forgot to start this this uh, uh, library, and I'm gonna put a watch on it because it's actually a pretty good uh, library, and it's being used by over three thousand six uh, seven hundred uh, or so um, uh, repositories uh, around GitHub. That's pretty much it. Uh, I hope you learned something. I hope you enjoyed this. If you have any questions, comments, uh, or concerns, please uh, feel free to drop a comment in the comment section. And don't forget to like and subscribe. I'll see you in another video. Thank you for watching.